Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to stitch together your spiral Tawashi into its spiral shape. Okay, so here's my piece. And if you're not sure how to count, um, if you have your tail on the left side, then you know that the first ridge, I'm not sure if you can see that, is two, that's two rows. So if you, you could just count up your ridges by twos. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 20. And that means that half of a piece there or that one row there makes 21. So now I know I have 21 rows. So if you have 21 rows, your, your beginning tail will be on the same side as your working string at the end of row 21. Okay, so now that you have enough rows, you're going to cut a long length. It doesn't, you know, just as long as it's pretty long because we're going to do a lot with it. Okay, so I have a nice long length there. I'm going to put my needle on there. Um, you can fasten off before. I just always fasten it off with my needle once I do this. So we have it fastened off there and we have a needle attached to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over, turn your work, and we're going to turn it this way as well so that we can have this and this lined up in this way. Just like the pictures show in the pattern itself. Okay, so the trick about this is we're going to connect these two. So this is the this is your chain foundation chain row and this is row 21. So you want to make sure that row 21 where the string is connected is going to be closest to you and then we're going to connect it to this row here. So the trick is to continue these ridges so we're going to leave the front loops alone and start by inserting in the back loop okay of row 21 and then go through the first basically at the knot of your foundation and we're going to do what, what we call whip stitches which means we're going to and I like to do this first one twice just to make sure that I have the edge real nice not necessarily necessary but I like to do it and then we're going to go into the next back loop and then th under both of the loops of the leftover piece of the foundation chain okay so you're just going to whip stitch all the way across matching up your stitches okay this remix yarn is a little bit hard to see so hopefully it works out for you I can make another video with a solid color yarn if you guys need me to just let me know all right so we're going to just go all the way across making sure that we don't skip anything and that we have nice consistent stitches across okay this is actually the fun part okay we're almost there we're gonna go all the way across All right, we got two more to go. Here's one, and here's the last one. There we go. So now, as you can see, we have a nice piece there. Okay, so now the trick is we're going to close up the top, and then we're going to close up the bottom, and when we pull that tight, it's going to pull it like this, and it's going to be a nice tawashi. Okay. So you can do this top any way you want, but I find that if you, if you want, you can tie this into a knot at the top just to, you know, finish off that. It's not going to hurt, but it's not completely necessary either. But I like to do that. And then I like to see how you have your ridge here. I like to, the top one is actually goes at a slightly different angle. So it's right there and it's 
So you, I like to pick that ridge there and just go under the very top loop. You can pick any special place that you want, but I find if you pick that loop up there, it gives your center, the gather, center gather, a really nice look to it. So really I'm only putting a loop in here every ridge, which is every two rows, okay? Some people may even want to just do this and go back and forth. That's fine too if that's what you have to do. You experiment and you pick what you think works best for you. Notice how I'm not really pulling it tight yet either. I like to go through all of them, but again, this is just one way to do it. Okay, so I'm coming full circle here. Um, this one was the first loop that I went under. I like to go under that as my last one as well to make sure I did one full complete revolution so that when I pull it like a drawstring, oops, see when you pull it, look at that, nice and closed and spirally. Okay, so now you can also, this is a good point to tie it to in a knot to any other little section right next to where the string came out. Pull it tight and then pull Push this right into the center of your spiral, out the other side. Okay, now I'm not going to cut this. I'm going to continue and just start anywhere on the other side now. So see my string is coming out the center. It doesn't matter where. You don't have to line it up. I come out one of these big holes. You can come out anywhere you want. And then just repeat that same, same thing. I'm going to pick out another spot here. All the way across again a second time again I don't pull it tight yet I like to do that slowly and manually by myself after I've done another full revolution all the way around keep going keep going okay so when I've come close Let's see, I've got one here, and then this is the, the first one I went into. Okay, so if you just pull carefully, this yarn in particular is not very strong, so I have to be very careful not to break my string as I pull this tight. Okay, and you can flatten it out into your shape. But you're going to pull this all the way as tight as you can. All right, and then as it's with it still being tight, pulled tight, you're going to tie another knot. You can tie two if you want. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. And now I like to just go back into the center and then I just kind of pop it out aside here like that because I'm going to push it in. So now it's in there and I can just cut like that. And now this will get sucked up in there. And you just kind of balance it back out, making sure that the center of your spiral is about center point, like that. And there you go. See? Tawashi, done.